Now let's start another important topic in obstetrics, which is bleeding during pregnancy. Now this topic, first of all, we talk about early pregnancy bleeding. And then after we do this, we move on to the late pregnancy bleeding. So let's focus on early pregnancy bleeding in this class. Now, these bleedings, okay, early pregnancy means, of course, we are talking about first trimester. The second and third trimester are considered a late pregnancy bleeding. The second trimester comes in the middle. So, you know, either way you can include that actually, but early uh, pregnancy is first trimester, late pregnancy is third trimester. Now, first of all, what are the causes of first trimester bleeding? Let's list them. Now, before I go there, let me uh, you know tell you the importance of this topic. In pregnancy, okay, any time if there is bleeding occurs, any time right from the conception till the birth of the baby, you know, this is always considered a serious sign. So we should properly okay investigate, or I can say we should do proper workup of that lady who develops bleeding during the pregnancy. Bleeding in the first trimester can be from many causes that may or may not be related to the pregnancy. Now, she is she's a pregnant lady. That's what we are talking about this in obstetrics. But many of the time, the bleeding may not be related to the pregnant condition. It may be caused by some other medical condition or something else. So we should note that. So the common causes are okay see here a spontaneous abortion every student know what is the meaning of abortion now this is the termination of pregnancy before 20 weeks of gestation so if it occurs without any identifiable cause this is called spontaneous abortion means we we doctor we, we have not done okay uh, abortion that is called induced abortion that's a different thing Healthcare personnel is not involved there. The abortion has occurred on its own. This is called spontaneous. Second important cause is ectopic pregnancy. This is an important cause of first trimester bleeding and ectopic pregnancy will be taught, okay, later on, okay, later on. It's a very important topic. Now, ectopic pregnancy means the implantation of that fertilized ovum doesn't occur inside the uterine cavity it occurs outside the uterine cavity most common site is fallopian tube okay fallopian tube now the main danger in ectopic pregnancy is that fertilized ovum is rapidly enlarging in size so the lumen of fallopian tube is not enough to accommodate that rapid enlarging embryo so what happens after some time it will rupture that rupture of fallopian tube leads to massive hemorrhage inside the pelvic cavity that can cause hypovolemic shock and the lady may die but it will give certain clues okay that one of the clue is bleeding from the vagina in first trimester another is high dietary for mole also known as molar pregnancy molar pregnancy or high dietary deform mole this is an abnormal type of pregnancy where you know in the place of baby there will be molar tissues grape like structures which are developed there we'll talk about this special topic benign and malignant lesion like choriocarcinoma and cervical cancer okay other benign uh, lesions may also be there like fibroid or leomyoma okay both of these are malignant lesion which are listed here choriocarcinoma and cervical cancer. Now, the choriocarcinoma is related to with pregnancy because the, the term chorion, isn't it? It's related to the pregnancy, okay, usually. And cervical cancer is not related to pregnancy. It may occur non-pregnant ladies as well. Trauma, trauma can uh, lead to bleeding anytime, anywhere. So these are some of the important causes. Now, let's move on. Now, how to do the workup? Now, as a medical student and as a doctor, this is very, very important knowledge. Because by the time uh, this pregnant lady comes to us with history of bleeding, 
we should know how to proceed further. So, first of all, history should be taken. Okay, ask about the vaginal bleeding. What is the duration? What is the extent or amount? Okay, what type of vaginal bleeding? Is it with clot or not? Is a fresh type of bleeding? All those questions must be asked. Is there any abdominal pain along with vaginal bleeding or not? Very important question. Now, regarding the physical uh, examination, check the vital sign, rule out shock or sepsis. Now, every student know the vital signs. That is heart rate or pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate, temperature, and pulse oximetry. So probably pulse oximetry is not necessary here now, okay? But other four vital signs are taken all the time. Now, here the important two are pulse and blood pressure because this is a case of bleeding. Who knows the bleeding may be excessive inside the pelvic cavity, which we cannot see from outside. So whether that lady is already in shock or not, we will tell that by examination of the vital sign. Now, let me ask you some important question here. What happens to the pulse in case of hypovolemic shock? What happens to the pulse? The pulse low volume of pulse. No volume of collapsing pulse. Low volume of pulse. Exactly. There will be there will be tachycardia. Okay. There will be tachycardia and there will be low volume pulse. It is called low volume pulse. Now the pulse is not very strong, okay? That's the meaning, low volume pulse. Yes, you can also- peripheral vascular resistance. Exactly, this is also known as 3D pulse, 3D pulse. So because of uh, this type of uh, phenomena, the sympathetic nervous system will be stimulated. So there'll be vasoconstriction going on in the peripheral circulation. As a result of this, there is cold periphery, cold periphery. And because of the same mechanism of activation of sympathetic nervous system, there will be sweating. So this is called cold and clammy periphery. Cold and clammy periphery. This is a feature of hypovolemic shock. If there is septic shock, if there is septic shock, then the periphery would be warm. It's not cold. And that is because of vasodilation. So always remember this, okay? In septic shock, the periphery warm. In hypovolemic shock, it is cold. So these are important points. If I take the blood pressure, in severe type of shock, the blood pressure will be low. It is already decreased. But in the early cases of shock, blood pressure is still within normal limit. See here? Okay, let's move on. Now, after this, okay, after this, we are going to do the pelvic examination. Okay, pelvic examination. Now, pelvic examination uh, is done by different way. One is abdominal exam, another is per vaginal exam. Abdominal exam and per vaginal exam. So this pelvic examination mainly means per vaginal exam at this time. So we, the doctor, the obstetrician quickly do the per vaginal exam, first inspection there, okay, uh, with the help of the speculum, then probably with the help of a finger, she can do per vaginal exam. So this is to note the source of bleeding and cervical dilation. If cervix is open, okay, the different type of abortion can be diagnosed. If cervix is closed, then some other type of diagnosis can be done. So this, this is a very important type of examination. Please mute yourself. Now, another uh, some Investigative a diagnostic test would be quantitative beta HCG level. Now you all know the importance of beta HCG during pregnancy. One, it will confirm the pregnant state. Okay, not hundred percent of the time because there are certain other situation where beta HCG can be secreted. But you know usually if beta HCG is there in the urine or in the blood, it, it will we always think about pregnancy as the first differential diagnosis. Now, quantitative means what is the level? Okay, what is the level of beta HCG? What is the level of beta HCG? We should check whether it is consistently increasing or not. 
if consistently increasing beta hcg level then probably molar pregnancy would be diagnosed or high rtd for mole which is associated with very high level of beta hcg so this is one of the example cbc is always done to know what is the extent of anemia if there is serious type of blood loss then the hemoglobin will fall down the hematocrit will fall down if there is already some complications because of the missed abortion for example then the lady will suffer from dic and dic is associated with thrombocytopenia okay sometimes there may be septic abortion septic means infection so that is associated with increased wbc count that's why cbc is a very important part of our workup we always do that after that we go for blood type and rh okay group testing what is a blood group is it a b ab or o okay that's not enough what is the rh is it negative or positive for example ab positive or ab negative a positive or a negative like that now one very important knowledge here is an anti d immunoglobulin injection should be given to all pregnant uh, ladies that have vaginal bleeding and rh antigen negative i want to revise this patient pregnant ladies are not called patient okay so please you need to correct it this is a mistake here pregnancy is a physiological condition we don't call the those patient they are pregnant ladies or you can simply call it pregnant state now what what i'm telling here now see here an anti d immunoglobulin injection should be given to all pregnant lady if they have vaginal bleeding and they are rh negative so let me explain this uh, you know by giving one example here so please listen all of you so if that lady is a negative okay if she is a negative and she is having bleeding in the first trimester now we we presume okay we presume okay she may develop rh incompatibility disease and because of this the baby which is developing inside the uterus will suffer now so just to protect that baby from suffering okay we have to give anti d immunoglobulin anti d immunoglobulin so this is the meaning now this anti d immunoglobulin okay will will not allow that rh incompatibility to to occur wait okay so let's continue so one of the student has not even you know bother to unmute himself so is causing a lot of noise you know and we cannot explain properly if the noise comes there so i have, I have muted you all after some time i'll unmute you again now let's move on so regarding this okay uh, this uh, blood type and rh uh, uh, negative group we already talked about this is called rh isoimmunization that means if the blood group of the baby is rh positive and during this uh, have bleeding uh, during pregnancy some of the fetal blood may enter into the maternal circulation and that can cause antibody production in the mother now to 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 neutralize this type of mechanism anti d immunoglobulin also known as rogam injection rogam later on also we'll talk about it rogam injection should be given ultrasound assesses the fetal viability and contents of the uterus ultrasound is a very important test or investigation during pregnancy it is very safe type of test remember there is no harm of ultrasonographic study and it assesses whether the baby is viable or is still surviving there and what are the contents of the uterus sometimes what happens the lady comes with abortion so we should uh, you know check what is the content inside the uterus if everything has already come out or something is left behind so that is told by ultrasound let's move on now these are some of the very important you know knowledge what we discussed till now so let us revise them quickly always check blood type and rh on all pregnant lady with vaginal bleeding 
give anti D immunoglobulin if R is negative. And this anti D immunoglobulin or ROGAM is given to prevent from RH isoimmunization. An anti D antibody injection should be given to all pregnant patient or lady. Let me uh, you know correct myself. I should say pregnant ladies again who have vaginal bleeding, who are RH antigen negative, or who have RH antibody screening negative. Okay, so all of them should be given. Now, with this information, let's enter into the discussion of spontaneous abortion. This is a very, very important topic from the exam point of view. We love to ask this. Now, spontaneous abortions are accidents of pregnancy. Okay, they are considered as accidents of pregnancy. This is termination of pregnancy. Now, there is no you know ongoing state in the pregnancy now. Okay, and in this spontaneous abortion, there is expulsion of the product of conception without medical or mechanical intervention. Please analyze this sentence, okay, very well. Whatever the products of conception is there inside the uterine cavity would be, okay, coming out without medical or mechanical intervention. That's why it is called spontaneous. We have not done anything there, okay. This is not induced abortion. We have not used any medicine. We have not used any surgical instrument. It has happened on its own. This is called spontaneous abortion. Now, there are so many different types of spontaneous abortion. Sometimes what happens? It is just a threatened type of abortion. Means, okay, nothing has happened till now. Only bleeding, only a bit of pain. But the product of conception are still there inside the uterus. They have not come out. Cervix is not still open. This is threatened type of abortion. Sometimes it is incomplete. A little bit of product has come out, something is still inside. Sometimes it is a complete type of abortion. Everything has come out. Sometimes it is a missed abortion. Okay. The, the pregnancy is discontinued. The fetus is dead, but nothing has come out. So all these are different types of spontaneous abortion, which we are going to talk one after other in this class. Now, regarding the etiology of spontaneous abortion, there are so many, and these are chromosomal abnormality. Okay, chromosomal abnormality means the baby was present inside the uterus. Some some faulty type of development is there. Okay, some faulty type of you know chromosomal arrangement is there, and as a result of this, there is abortion. There are different type of chromosomal abnormality. Okay like like tetraploidy okay triploidy isn't it aneuploidy all these different terms are there okay we'll talk about this infection is another cause of spontaneous abortion anatomical abnormality of the uterus okay anatomical abnormality sometimes there is a big septa present inside the uterine cavity sometimes okay the cavity itself is too uterine didelphi we say okay septate uterus we say by cornode uterus, so many different types are there. We'll talk about this. Endocrine causes, some hormonal abnormality, immunological diseases, and environmental factors. So all of these may be responsible for spontaneous abortion. Okay, let's move on. Now, abortion, okay, see there, this is such an important question for the students, so everybody should know. So we have, uh, again, explain this in a bit of detail this is intentional or unintentional termination of a pregnancy less than 20 to 24 weeks of gestation now probably i'm making you a little bit confused here please do not get confused okay why it is written 20 to 24 weeks because some of the older textbook and some of the older examiner they still you know go after this definition because they studied like that they studied like that, but these days, 20 week, okay, is the period of viability, and before that, 
if termination of pregnancy occur we call it abortion this may be intentional or unintentional spontaneous abortion is unintentional and intentional means it's an induced abortion definition includes both isn't it right now we are talking about spontaneous abortion that's a different thing but whenever we ask you about abortion you can very easily answer like this if we talk about weight of the uh, baby the weight usually is less than 500 gram and if we talk about the length of the uh, you know fetus there it is less than 25 centimeters now completed spontaneous abortion is the spontaneous expulsion of all fetal and placental tissue from the uterine cavity before 20 weeks of gestation this is a complete abortion it is one of the type spontaneous abortion occurs in 30 percent of all recognized pregnancy 30 percent of all recognized pregnancy and most of the others are unrecognized because they occur before or at the time of the next ex expected mens. what does that mean the lady believe she is having menstruation but actually that is a spontaneous abortion and that is very very difficult to diagnose so that's why it is known as unrecognized spontaneous abortion so this is much more common than the recognized one now let's analyze what are the causes of spontaneous abortion now all of you please focus here the first of them is a chromosomal abnormality majority of abnormal karyotypes are numeric abnormality and they happen or that can occur as a result of errors during gametogenesis fertilization or the first division of the fertilized ovum i'm quite sure you know the meaning of this word gametogenesis what is the answer what do you mean by gametogenesis okay so let me unmute you and ask this question yes what is gametogenesis guys gamete formation gamete formation very good very good this is very easy easy question okay so easy answer this is gamete formation gamete formation now there are two types of gamete the sperm and ovum these are called gamete okay sperm and ovum now the sperm and ovum when they fuse with each other we call it fertilization now during that process during that process the chromosome okay sometimes will be halved than than the beginning this is called haploid number okay, in the beginning probably every cell in our body is a diploid one except this gamete the gametes are haploid and when those two gametes fuse with each other then again it will become diploid we all know this uh, this principle so sometimes what happens during this process some some problem will occur and as a result of this it will not be diploid okay this is called aneuploidy aneuploidy means it is not diploid okay any other number rather than that is called aneuploidy now there are different examples here okay see here trisomy monosomy triploidy and tetraploidy now trisomy every student know can you give me three examples of trisomy down syndrome down syndrome very this is a overwhelming response from the student because all of them know this question very good so trisomy down syndrome edward syndrome and potau syndrome down syndrome is the commonest among them all trisomy 21 edward trisomy 18 potau trisomy 13 okay so trisomy means one set of chromosome is extra now see there in down syndrome only 21 chromosome is extra other chromosome are normal this is called trisomy is quite common but triploidy now trisomy and triploidy many of the time students confuse between these two don't get confused triploidy triploidy means all the chromosomes okay whatever present are three in number 
there are three triploidy trisomy means any one of them is three others are normal so this is trisomy triploidy there are three okay monosomy so one chromosome is deleted a perfect example is turner syndrome 45 x one x chromosome is deleted monosomy now tetraploidy isn't it tetraploidy means four chromosome the every chromosome for example chromosome number one two three okay till till the you know sex one so all of these are four in number this is tetraploidy all of these are abnormal and they may result in spontaneous abortion Let's move on. Now, second important types of etiology here are infections. Infections. Now, see here. Infectious agent in the cervix, in the uterine cavity, or seminal fluid can cause abortion. Now, either they are already present in the cervix or cervical canal, either they are already in the uterine cavity, or even in the seminal fluid from the male. Now this infection may be asymptomatic, but they can still cause the problem. They may be Toxoplasma gondii. If you remember, it's a part of Torch group of infection. Okay, T O belongs to Toxoplasma. Sometimes only T is written like that. RP simplex, another member of Torch group of infection. Urea plasma urea lyticum. It is okay non-specific pathogen which can lead to sexually transmitted infection. Mycoplasma hominis, similar type of organism, okay, similar type of organism, we call it atypical bacteria, which can cause non-specific infection there. Listeria monocytosin, it's a type of bacteria, which can specifically causes infection in immunocompromised people and during the pregnancy. Pregnant state is one of the risk factors for listeria infection. Chlamydia, another atypical type of bacteria just like mycoplasma and gonorrhea is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. So these are some of the infection which can lead to abortion. The third important groups would be structural abnormality inside the uterus. Now have a look here. Septet or bicornoid uterus. There is a big septa in the uterine cavity so that the whole okay whole uh, cavity of the uterus would be very small now the baby cannot develop there properly baby cannot grow there properly so it can result in abortion very easy explanation by core note okay the two horns of the uterus looks like a horn it is coming right there from the fundic area okay this is also abnormal anatomical condition Another important is cervical incompetence. Now, cervical incompetence means the cervix remains open. Okay, the cervix remains open during, especially during the second trimester. Now, that open cervix cannot hold the product of conception, which is called POC, product of conception, and it would easily come out. Leomyoma. Now, leomyoma are the benign tumor which develop from the smooth muscle and uterus has got a smooth muscle in the myometrium so if those smooth muscles are big enough so that they give pressure all the time towards the uterine cavity especially submucosal type of leomyoma it can result in abortion now this leomyoma can be of different type according to the location submucosal sometimes subserosal just below below the serosa okay and sometimes inside the myometrium itself another important structural abnormality would be intrauterine adhesion which may occur there from previous curetas now curetas means okay curate now curate is an important surgical procedure which is done okay to remove the period uh, sorry the product of conception let me give you one example to you here sometimes the lady comes with incomplete type of abortion a bit of product of conception has already come out a bit is left behind in the uterine cavity now we cannot keep it there it will lead to severe bleeding so we need to remove it now how to remove it one of the way 
is curatase. You insert that curate from the cervix into the uterine cavity and gently, okay, gently stroke the endometrium, gently stroke the uterine cavity, okay, that is called curatase. It is a, a bit of sharp type of instrument. Another type of or another group of etiologies, I should say, are endocrine abnormalities and immunological factors. Now see here, progesterone deficiency during pregnancy can lead to spontaneous abortion. Now what is the function of progesterone during pregnancy? Yes? It helps in progesterone. And making the uterus and sex secretory Okay, good. So, very good. I already got the answers, okay, from many students because all of you are speaking at the same time. So, you know, the looking the name would be a big problem here, but I'm so happy from the response. Very good. Now, progesterone has got two important functions. You just remember these two important functions right now. One, during the uh, early part of a uh, pregnancy, okay, progesterone is secreted by corpus luteum. Now that corpus luteum is making that uh, endometrium ready for the implantation. Okay, and later on also it will continue to do that. It will continue to do that because later on progesterone is secreted directly from the placenta. That's the first thing. Second, now after it is there it will relax the uterus. It will relax the smooth muscle in the uterus. And that relaxation is very much necessary during pregnancy. If, if uterus is contracting all the time, baby cannot develop there, okay? That contraction will push the product of conception outside. So if progesterone is deficient, there may result in abortion. Another is polycystic ovarian syndrome polycystic ovarian syndrome okay this is one of the abnormal condition where a lot of cyst forms inside the ovary now uh, it has got another term okay another medical term and that is called stin let me write that for you stin leventhal syndrome stin leventhal syndrome so this stein leventhal syndrome is a synonymous term with polycystic ovarian syndrome where okay a lot of androgen hormone is released from the uh, ovary androgen lots of androgen the, this estrogen will be you know converted into androgen and this androgen is the main culprit in this case uncontrolled diabetes can also result in spontaneous abortion I already told you there are two types of diabetes during pregnancy. One is called gestational diabetes, which is developed right during this pregnant condition or state. And another is a chronic diabetes, means the lady was already diabetic. Okay, and that is continued. Let's move on. Now, another one is the immunological factors. Now, these immunological factors are lupus anticoagulant and anti-cardiolipin antibody. Now, anti-cardiolipin antibody is a part of antiphospholipid syndrome. Lupus anticoagulant is a, is a part of SLE. SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, is a connective tissue disorder where okay, a lot of organs and tissues of our bodies would be involved. And during pregnancy, if SLE occurs, it can result in abortion and one very important uh, you know, knowledge I'm sharing with you now is in the newborn also, this SLE can result in heart block. Heart block in the newborn baby can be caused by SLE in the mother. Okay? It can also result in abortion and lupus okay, anticoagulant is a commonly present in, in SLE and anticardiolipin antibody is a part of antiphospholipid syndrome where there is excessive thrombosis occurs in the blood vessel. Thrombosis is very common in antiphospholipid syndrome resulting in abortion. Now, 
what about the environmental factors that can cause spontaneous abortion have a look here tobacco or cigarette smoking okay there is one uh, you know information here more than or equal to 14 cigarettes per day increases the abortion rate now we should not go after this we should strictly tell to those pregnant lady that even one cigarette a day is very harmful for them or for the developing baby that means is tobacco consumption and alcohol consumption are strictly prohibited during pregnancy they are not allowed irradiation or x-ray exposure or radiation exposure okay it can lead to spontaneous abortion environmental toxin exposure and consumption of a lot of caffeine more than five cups per day different studies have shown that okay uh, caffeine is a good if if we you know uh, take to a normal level for example up to two cup or maybe three cups fine two cups are usually you know uh, preferable they are good for our body but if we if we excessively drink them then they may cause problem not only in pregnant condition to other people as well trauma okay trauma is always an important cause of uh, abortion for example the lady uh, ha is uh, pregnant she is in first trimester she suffers from fall from a height okay or she suffers from road traffic accident or some serious type of injury on her uh, pelvic cavity or on the abdomen she may abort because the damage done on the uterus so these are some of the environmental factors now uh, before uh, we we finished today's class okay we are almost towards the end now look at the types of spontaneous abortion and we'll start right from here in our next class threatened abortion missed abortion inevitable abortion incomplete abortion complete abortion and septic abortion okay we'll we'll continue each of them so we were talking about the different types of spontaneous abortion in the first half of the class now let me repeat again these different types are threatened abortion missed abortion inevitable abortion incomplete abortion complete abortion and septic abortion now these are you know special meanings now, all this class this class today actually is all about this so threatened means the pregnancy is threatening okay to be terminated that means till now the product of conception has not come out but it will discontinue or it will come out very soon if it is not treated in time this is called threatened abortion we'll talk about it uh, listen to the meaning first then i'll move on to the each of them missed abortion abortion has already occurred okay and nothing has come out it is remaining inside the uterine cavity just like a dead okay fetus this is called missed abortion inevitable abortion means it will occur it has extended to that extent that it the abortion will happen we cannot stop it this is called inevitable abortion incomplete abortion has already occurred and some of the product of conception has come out some have left behind in the uterine cavity incomplete abortion complete the whole product of conception has come out and septic abortion is associated with infection in the uterine cavity so these all are different types of spontaneous abortion so let's uh, highlight each of them see here threatened abortion so what do you mean by that so threatened abortion is a uterine bleeding from a gestation that is less than 20 week without cervical dilation or passage of tissue the duration has to be less than 20 weeks otherwise we don't call it abortion so this is universal to all types of abortion okay 
the gestational age has to be less than 20 weeks. And she here, it has threatened to discontinue, but till now there is no cervical dilation and without cervical dilation, nothing would come out. It's very, you know, isn't it logical? Or there is no passage of tissue till now. That cannot happen without cervical dilation. In this condition, pregnancy may discontinue, sorry, may continue, although up to 50% may result in loss of pregnancy. It has just threatened to discontinue. So it may not always discontinue. Pregnancy may continue in this condition, but almost 50% will result in loss of pregnancy. Now, threatened abortion increases the risk of preterm labor and delivery. Definitely. So these are uh, you know, some of the points regarding threatened abortion. Now the important point as a doctor, as a medical student, as an obstetrician, how to diagnose it. Now, what is the history here? History is bleeding during the pregnancy, probably during the first trimester. Now, when that type of patient comes to us, then we have to examine by speculum, okay? Cusco's speculum is the one which we have put into the vagina and examine. It reveals blood coming from a closed cervical os. Extremely important point. So let me underline it. The os, okay, is closed. Now, os means the cervical opening. Okay, there are two os, external and internal. Now, right now we are talking about the external os. Internal os cannot be easily visible from outside. So let me tell you a little bit more description here. Cervix is a canal. Okay, that canal has got two end, external end and the internal end, which will continue with uterine cavity. The external end is called external os. The internal is internal os. In between them is a cervical canal. Now, without any amniotic fluid or products of conception in the endocervical canal, this is about threatened abortion. The cervix is closed and there is no loss of product of conception. Ultrasonography, USG is ultrasonography will show an empty uterus if gestation very early or it will show gestational sac or even fetus with cardiac activity. It depends on which uh, time of gestation you are talking about. If it is very, very early, okay, probably it will show empty uterus. And later on, if already the gestational sac has formed, then it will show that, or even later than that, there may be fetus with cardiac activity. But remember, all this duration has to be earlier than 20 weeks. If uncertain diagnosis, if uncertain of diagnosis, we can follow the serial, okay, HCG means beta HCG, okay. It should increase by a minimum of 60% every 48 hour if normal pregnancy, but if it is already discontinued, this cannot happen. So why this test is done? To make sure that a normal pregnancy is there, if it is discontinued, if already abortion has occurred, then the HCG level will never increase. It will be static or even decreases. So this is the importance of HCG test. Regarding the management, the most important management is observation with bed rest. This uh, condition has threatened to discontinue. Till now, it has not discontinued. This is very important sentence. That's why that lady should be observed, okay, uh, and give a proper rest, either in the hospital or at home. This is threatened abortion. Okay, let's move on. Now, the second important type of abortion is inevitable abortion, inevitable. Inevitable abortion is vaginal bleeding, <clears throat> cramp or crampy pain, and cervical dilation at less than 20 weeks gestation without expulsion of product of 
conception poc is product of conception so you already you know you've written the full form but let me write it again for you because this is a very very important point poc the short form we keep on writing poc in this whole topic okay so this is product of conception product of conception poc so in this condition there is no loss of product of concept uh, conception but the cervical dilation has already occurred or cervix has already opened up there is a history of vaginal bleeding and cramp this cramp occurs because of uterine contraction now let's combine all these points together this pregnancy probably cannot be continued now okay we cannot save this pregnancy there will be discontinuation of pregnancy inevitably that's why it is called inevitable abortion it will occur it has reached to that stage from where it cannot come back now this is called inevitable abortion now see here regarding the diagnosis there is presence of menstrual like cramp this is because of uterine contraction and it will push the product of conception outside A speculum examination reveals blood coming from an open cervical os. Another important point: the cervix is open. Okay, we are talking about the external os now. This is open. That's why the product of conception can come out. There is already menstrual-like cramp, and the fetal cardiac activity may or may not be present on ultrasound. if the baby is still surviving if the fetus is still surviving inside okay then uh, we may hear it and uh, in other time it is already dead there inside okay so this is inevitable abortion at the end we need to differentiate this okay so please do focus now what about the management of inevitable abortion now i already told you we cannot continue this pregnancy we cannot save this pregnancy so surgical evacuation of the uterus if fetal cardiac activity is absent definitely the fetus is already dead absent means so surgical evacuation of the uterus has to be done an expectant management if fetal cardiac activity is still present but let me tell you probably okay after few hours or probably within few days uh this uh, pregnancy would be discontinued but till now the fetal cardiac activity is still there isn't it so we hope everything will be all right but frankly speaking this is a inevitable abortion this is not threatened abortion we are talking about so most probably pregnancy will be discontinued and within few days or few hours okay the product of conception would be expelled inevitable abortion now the third one okay third important type of abortion is called incomplete abortion the name itself suggest incomplete means there is the passage of some but not all poc so period of uh, sorry product of conception some of them has passed outside but some are retained inside and everything has occurred before 20 weeks of gestation this is called incomplete abortion abortion has already occurred some of the tissue has come outside some have left behind so it is incomplete abortion now there is increased risk of these things in incomplete abortion now what are those risk let's talk about them there is ongoing bleeding requiring a blood transfusion now why is there ongoing bleeding yes i want to hear some answer here why bleeding would would continue in this case because there is some tissues sir, sir because of cervical dilation sir i am rupture me i already got the answer yeah. i already got the answer very good the answer is because some of the tissue is left behind now remember my prior lectures i clearly told you after the delivery of the baby 
if some of the tissues are left behind even in normal delivery it will keep on you know causing the hemorrhage in this case also some of the product of conception has come out but not all resulting in okay continuous hemorrhage number 1 number 2 ascending infection the cervix is open okay so there is high chance of ascending infection and septic abortion now this is very important point so what what they do what that that lady or the family do sometimes they may go to some other places some minor clinic or some hospital where uh, you know even if they do some surgical procedure they will do it okay without proper sterilization without proper technique so that the infection may be introduced inside the birth canal or inside the uterine cavity resulting in infection that is called septic abortion so all of these have increased risk in case of incomplete abortion let's move on now how to diagnose it okay this is important point as a student you should know about them so regarding the diagnosis there is continued cramping and bleeding important point continuous cramping as well as bleeding because uterus is trying to push the left over content outside it is trying to push that content outside that's why there is continued cramping and of course bleeding the uterus is enlarged and bogy this bogy means there is still some content inside and there is dilation of internal os external os is also dilated there is no doubt about it same time internal os is also dilated now if some student have joined later let me explain this once again cervix is a canal this canal has got two end internal os means inner inner opening external os means outer opening so through the inner os and internal os cervix will continue into uterine cavity and through the external os it will continue into the vagina this is the meaning now product of conception or poc present in the endocervical canal or even vagina because it is incomplete abortion and the poc which is retained in the uterus may be diagnosed as seen with ultrasonography so let me summarize in one sentence here some of the product of conception have already come out some have been left behind this is called incomplete abortion there is very high risk of ongoing hemorrhage okay high risk of ongoing hemorrhage there is high risk of sepsis as well if it is not treated properly what is the management then we have already diagnosed it so let's talk about the treatment first we have to assess the hemodynamic status and stabilize if the hemodynamic dynamic status is not stable now, what do you mean by that now this hemodynamic status is all about what is the pulse what is the blood pressure how strong is the pulse what is the capillary refill time is the periphery cold and clammy so all these things okay uh, come here so check the vital sign and make sure okay the vital signs are within normal limit if not for example if pulse is very high if it is a low volume pulse the blood pressure is already fallen then we have to give iv fluid okay we have to give iv fluid now which iv fluid we give which iv fluid yes which iv fluid is given in the beginning 0.9 normal saline normal saline hartman now hartman the answer is crystalloid okay you can call it crystalloid so let me write that for you but you are right absolutely it is 0.9 percent normal saline oh, no, 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 or lactated ringer can you please mute yourself with that i'll i'll ban that student now
okay now that is crystalloid okay which are 0.9 percent normal saline and lactated ringer these are the first thing which we give later on if they do not help the patient then we of course go for the blood never forget this golden you know uh, transfusion principle in any type of shock it's the same thing here now for the definitive treatment okay for the definitive treatment then what what we are uh, going to do now for the definitive treatment we have to remove the leftover content from the uterus and that can be done by suction dilatation or curettage suction dilatation or curettage this curettage is also known as okay dilatation and curettage is very commonly known as dnc okay see here dilatation and curettage dnc very very commonly done procedure in obstetrics and gynecology now this is done to remove the leftover product of conception from the uterus and after we remove it of course we have to send it to the pathology lab and they check it whether it is the leftover content okay of the fetus or it is something else we always need to do it this is the standard procedure now in case of recurrent abortion in case of recurrent abortion do not forget to do karyotyping now this karyotyping is done to find out whether the chromosomal abnormality are the causes of recurrent abortion or something else if karyotype is abnormal now if you remember in the first half of the class we'll talk about the different type of karyotyping like trisomy like triploidy tetraploidy isn't it like uh, one type one sort of chromosome is deleted okay sometimes it is called mosaicism different cell lines are there or chromosome lineage is there so this is the different form of karyotyping so we need to make sure what type of karyotyping is there only diploid type of karyotyping is considered normal everything else is abnormal so this is the meaning now dilated cervix is seen with inevitable and incomplete abortion so this is one of the very important message which is repeated here again in threatened abortion there is no dilated cervix the cervix is closed if it is open it is inevitable the product of conception will be lost now or later on and in incomplete abortion of course it will still dilated because some of the things are still left behind and it is still passing now after this let's talk about the complete abortion okay, the complete one now what do you mean by this the complete abortion is the complete passage of product of conception there is nothing left behind and after everything is passed the cervical os is closed now okay so it is it is almost like a complete lever though the duration is less than 20 weeks i am talking about the period of gestation here it is less than 20 weeks that's why we are talking it in the abortion topic but i can compare this with completed lever now everything has come out nothing is left behind in the uterine cavity so the cervix is closed so what are the important diagnostic point now the pain has ceased now why it has ceased because the uterus is no more you know intermittently contracting and relaxing everything has passed outside so uh, it is not like that uterus is well contracted cervical os may be closed and ultrasonography shows empty uterus so this is a very very important point for the diagnosis of complete abortion no more pain no more bleeding uterus is well contracted and rounded if we palpate it the external os is closed and ultrasonography shows empty uterus there is no product of conception left now after diagnosing it how is how do we manage it let's talk about the management see here send the product of conception to pathology to verify the intrauterine pregnancy just to confirm okay almost we have we have 
confirm it from our clinical examination. But this is a sort of lab investigation, isn't it? So it's a standard procedure, I already told you. So we have to do it. Between eight and 14 weeks, okay, if complete abortion is done or happened, I should say if it happened because we are talking about the spontaneous abortion now, curatage is often performed due to increased likelihood that the abortion was incomplete. Just to make sure if something is left behind or not, we have to go for curatage. Now you can easily write it dilatation and curatage here, okay? Dilatation and curatage. Now what's the meaning? So please listen carefully. Let me explain a little bit about this because this is a very important term here. Dilatation means the cervical opening would be dilated with some dilator, which are easily available in the operation room. So we first dilate the opening, make it bigger, and then through that opening, you insert a curate. Okay, curate is a sharp type of instrument. Then with the help of that curate, we will remove the abnormal contents which are still there inside the uterine cavity. This is called dilatation and curators. Okay, so curators. Observe the patient for further bleeding and signs of infection. It is always done. Though you are quite sure this is a case of complete abortion, but some doubt still remains there. If it is an incomplete type of abortion and if you have you know, send the patient home that don't worry, nothing will happen. And at home, the bleeding would continue, for example. Okay. And because some of the product of conception is coming out, it is still in the, in the uh, external os of the cervix. If it is still in the vagina, that may introduce the infection inside. This will be a big mistake from the doctor's side. So observe the patient for at least another 24 hour in the hospital for further bleeding and signs of infection. If nothing is there, you can safely uh, discharge the patient later on. Now, after complete abortion, okay, let's talk about, what do you mean by missed abortion? Okay, missed abortion, now see here. Now, missed abortion means the pregnancy is already discontinued before 20 weeks. If it has not happened, we cannot call it abortion. Please remember this. So the fetal demise means the baby is already dead, okay, before 20 weeks, but nothing has come out. Nothing has come out. That means without any expulsion of product of conception. This is called missed abortion. See here, it is a fetal demise before 20 weeks of gestation without expulsion of any product of conception. Now, regarding the diagnosis of missed abortion, a few important features should be fulfilled. And these are the pregnant uterus fails to grow and the symptoms of pregnancy have disappeared. Now, please use your common sense here. Why the uterus has failed to grow? Because the baby is already dead. The baby is not in increasing in size now. So as a result of this, the uterus fails to grow. There is no increase in the height of the uterus. And this is a very you know, alarming symptom for that pregnant lady. At the same time, whatever symptoms of pregnancy are there, they will disappear. Another important point here is there is intermittent vaginal bleeding or spotting or brown discharge and a firm closed cervix. Now, let me explain this for you. There is intermittent vaginal bleeding because the uterus may be a bit of contracting. Something is there and which is not a physiological anymore. It's already dead there some of the changes may occur in that dead content. So a bit of brown discharge may also come out. And 
till now nothing has come out right i mean the product of conception this is just a bit of discharge a bit of bleeding you know but the real content of the conception has not come out so the cervix is still closed it is not open if the cervix is open and if the product of conception have come out we cannot call it missed abortion it will be incomplete abortion this is important point now if you measure beta hcg which is called quantitative measurement it may decline or it may plateau now decline because the the baby is dead okay the the features of pregnancy have disappeared so as a result of this the level of beta hcg would decline or it will be same it will neither increase ultrasonography confirms the absence of fetal cardiac activity or empty gestational sac if it is very very early in the embryonic period sometimes we cannot you know detect anything but more commonly okay, there is something inside but we cannot uh, detect any cardiac activity because the baby is or fetus is already dead so these are the features of missed abortion see there okay let's move on now how to manage how to manage this case now regarding the management the expectant management is done in the beginning expectant management means we admit the lady in the hospital okay and we observe very closely now most women will spontaneously deliver the dead fetus within 2 weeks now when we do this type of therapy we just observe okay but remember if there is already some some type of complication we cannot uh, do this type of therapy or management we have to be a bit quicker in our management but if nothing has happened till now then we may opt for this type of treatment so most women will spontaneously deliver the dead fetus within 2 weeks now, risk of incomplete aseptic abortion is high in case of missed abortion so it may require a dilatation and curettage now let me explain this for you you already know what i am talking about here see this the baby is already dead inside so some of the content may come out it may turn into incomplete abortion or it may catch infection there so it may turn into septic abortion so it may require a dilatation and curettage to treat properly this is a type of surgical procedure now one of the very very alarming complication in this hello guys can you mute yourself Okay, I have muted all of you. Okay, sorry for that. I don't know. Please, even if you want to talk, you know, mute yourself, guys, because it will disturb all of us. Now, see here. the risk of incomplete aseptic abortion is very high we already talked about this now another one of the dreaded uh, you know problem or complication in this case is there is concern for coagulopathy there is concern for coagulopathy this coagulopathy means there is a concern for dic disseminated intravascular coagulation if this dead fetus is not delivered in time that's why this expectant type of management may be a little bit dangerous that what i was meaning before if nothing has happened till now still there is a risk and the risk is development of disseminated intravascular coagulation now you may be wondering what is the reason for this okay the reason for dic is the thromboplastin from that dead fetus may enter into the 
maternal circulation, the thromboplastin from the dead fetus may enter into the maternal circulation and this thromboplastin will start the, the feature of DIC or pathogenesis of DIC. It is very common if there is a fetal demise in second trimester and third trimester. Now, if it occurs in third trimester, you know, we don't call it abortion, okay? So forget about it. But still in second trimester till 20 week, we still call it abortion, isn't it? So it, the definition is fulfilled. Now the management is suction, dilatation and curatage. This is the surgical uh, treatment we, we like to do. We have to completely remove everything, whatever is there. And one more therapy is we can go for prostaglandin suppository. Okay, prostaglandin suppository. Now, uh, okay, let me ask you this question. Let me unmute you first. Okay, now the question is, what is the function of prostaglandin in the uterus? What prostaglandin will do in the uterus? Yes? Contraction in the uterus. Okay. okay, so prostaglandins are some sort of special okay, drugs in this case, though they are naturally present inside our body. Okay, they are naturally present inside our body, but they are used as drugs as well. So the function of them regarding the uterus is contraction of the smooth muscle of uterus. As a result of this, okay, as a result of this, the whatever content is there inside the uterus may come out. So we'll talk about this prostaglandin use a bit later also, okay? They can be given in a different way. The suppository, okay? Vaginal suppository is a, one of the way by which we give them suppository in the vagina. And they are absorbed from there and they will create the effect. Some others can be given as an oral form also. And some other can be injected as well. There are different types of prostaglandin we have, like prostaglandin E1 or PGE1, PGE2, and PGF2 alpha. PGE1, PGE2, and PGF2 alpha. There are different types. I will talk about that a bit later as well. Now, how to diagnose DIC? So probably we have discussed this before. Okay, now see here. DIC is diagnosed by different lab tests. And those lab tests would be decreased fibrinogen level. Fibrinogen level is low in case of DIC because it is used up. There will be low platelet. Platelets are again used up. And there will be prolonged PT as well as APTT. Okay, uh, this is partial thromboplastin time. If you write A in front, it will be activated partial thromboplastin time. Both are prolonged in case of DIC. Now, let me summarize it. DIC is diagnosed by decreased fibrinogen level, decreased platelet level, and increased level, uh, duration of PT as well as APTT. And if you have some other facility like D-dimer assay, then the level of D-dimer will be increased and fibrin degradation or fibrin split products are also increased. This is how we diagnose DIC in this type of situation. We're talking about the management of missed abortion. There is one term I like to highlight before we move further. Another uh, uh, common name we give for DIC is consumption coagulopathy. Consumption coagulopathy. This is a very good term. It describes itself. Consumption is the consumption of platelet as well as coagulation factor. And as a result of this, their level will be low in the body now and that will lead to hemorrhage. Okay. So this is consumption coagulopathy. This exactly happens in uh, DIC, a disseminated intravascular coagulation. Now, another type of abortion 
is septic abortion. Now, septic, septic means infection. So what happens here? In this condition, the product of conception is infected and which is present inside the uterine cavity. Now, the septic abortion can be threatened, can be inevitable, or can be incomplete type of abortion. Because all of these different types of abortion can be infected, and we call that septic abortion. Now, which microorganisms are commonly responsible? The answer is polymicrobial. The different types of bacteria are responsible. Some of them may be gram negative, some may be gram positive, and among them also, some of our anaerobe. Okay, anaerobe. So you know the uh, you know examples of all of them. Now another important question which may come in your mind is from where the infection reaches endometrial cavity or uterine cavity. Now this is maybe ascending one. Okay, it may be ascending one or it may be from the blood, isn't it? So all those different things you can answer. And septic shock is very common phenomena to happen in case of septic abortion, septic shock, because there is a severe infection going on in the uterine cavity. And if that infection reaches the blood, we call that septicemia, and that can result in septic shock. Now see here, so how to, diagnose this condition now because this is an infection so there will be fever this fever may be high grade at the same time the patient may feel weak and if we measure the blood pressure it is low hypotension is an important feature of septic shock tachycardia is a universal feature of any type of shock there is generalized pelvic discomfort because infection is going on there is uterine tenderness if we palpate, and there are signs of peritonitis. There are signs of peritonitis. Now, let me explain why peritonitis is so commonly associated with uterine infection. Please listen it very carefully, okay? This question is asked in viva exam if you are doing well during the time. Now, let's, let's talk about a little bit about the anatomy. If we talk about the uterine cavity, they are, the uterine cavity is connected with two fallopian tubes. And those fallopian tubes have different parts, isn't it? It is called intramural part, okay? Then uh, ampulla, isn't it? Then the other end, right? The other end means it's an ostium, uh, where the ovary is there. It has got different fimbria also. Now, that opening, is directly in communication with peritoneal cavity. Now, one end of the fallopian tube is in connection with the uterine cavity. The another end of fallopian tube is in connection with peritoneal cavity. Now, you got your answer. So, any infection from the uterine cavity can easily go to the peritoneal cavity, leading to peritonitis. Very, very important pathogenesis. If we examine Okay, if we examine the birth canal in case of septic abortion, so what will you see? That is speculum exam. We'll see malodorous, vaginal, and cervical discharge may be seen. This is very foul smelling discharge coming from the vagina, and the main origin is from the cervix and uterine cavity. This is foul smelling because it is infected. If we do CBC or complete blood count, there will be leukocytosis because this is a bacterial infection and ultrasonography shows retained product of conception because this is a septic abortion. It is still there inside the uterus. Okay, let's move on. Now, what are the lab tests you like to do or you want to order in case of septic abortion? Now, some of these you already know. The important ones are vaginal discharge, culture, and blood culture. Both of them are important one. We want to make sure which organism is responsible for septic abortion. So the discharge from the vagina should be cultured 
as well as blood culture because many of the time it has already gone into the blood check cbc and urine analysis ua is urine analysis these are routine check serum electrolyte this is also routinely done check liver function test okay blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine now lft is liver function test and bun and creatinine are called renal function test now remember you may be wondering what is the connection between septic abortion and doing these important test the connection is septic shock the connection is septicemia the septicemia has started from the uterine cavity or endometrial cavity but it has already gone into the blood and through the blood it has involved different organs it may involve liver it may involve kidney so just to make sure how these organs are functioning we need to order this test coagulation profile one of the very important one okay coagulation profile now coagulation profile let me explain a little bit about them because this important lesson for the students this coagulation profile okay you always want to do cbc first you have already done that actually and make sure what is the level of platelet number 1 number 2 do bleeding time and clotting time if they are abnormal then you have to go for prothrombin time and activated partial thromboplastin time if these are abnormal you want to go for factors assay okay factors analysis or assay there are different factors you all know fibrinogen is one of them okay factor 8 factor 9 factor 7 all of these different types of factors okay and to make sure whether dic is there or not you can go for fibrin degradation product fdp okay also known as d dimer assay so this is called coagulation profile now what is the connection between septic abortion and coagulation profile any type of sepsis in our body okay severe type of sepsis may result in dic it may result in dic that's the connection now how we manage a case of septic abortion you see here now this is infection so broad spectrum iv antibiotics definitely play a role broad spectrum iv antibiotic you see there now that iv antibiotic should have anaerobic bacterial coverage so let me give you one example here of that broad spectrum iv antibiotic coverage now see here if i use okay if i use third generation third generation cephalosporin third generation cephalosporin like ceftriaxone okay one of them if i use one amino glycoside one amino glycoside and if i use metronidazole look at this combination now it will cover almost any of the common organism third generation cephalosporin okay will have a gram positive coverage as well as gram negative coverage amino glycoside additional gram negative coverage you have and metronidazole is anaerobic coverage so this is a very good combination so this type of combination should be used in this type of patient another one dilatation and curettage this is dnc dilatation and curettage should be done after adequate tissue level of antibiotics in a hemodynamically stable patient so after 2 hours of giving good dose of iv antibiotic you can go for dilatation and curettage don't delay it try to remove that infected material as soon as possible okay now i want to compare this principle with a treatment of abscess until and unless you drain that abscess your antibiotics probably will not work properly the same type of concept here you have given antibiotic but if that infected product of conception is still there you know the patient is not going to get better so remove it as soon as possible with dilatation and curettage if hemodynamically unstable patient blood pressure is low 
that is called hemodynamically unstable start IV fluid and IV antibiotics that is broad spectrum perform dilatation and curators when patient is adequately stabilized. That means do not take the patient for surgery until and unless patient is stable. Otherwise, you will be in trouble because during that surgery, patient may need some, some anesthesia, patient may need some analgesia, some sedation. Okay, they may cause trouble to the patient if patient's uh, vitals are not stable. Another management is hysterectomy. Now, when hysterectomy is done, only if unable to evacuate the infected uterine contents by dilatation and curators, hysterectomy. What is hysterectomy? Anyone? So hysterectomy is removal of the uh, uh, of the uterus or a part of the uterus. Okay, very good. It is removal of the uterus. Very good answer. So this is surgical removal of the uterus, hysterectomy, and we we don't go for that. That is a very you know. A uh, big treatment. Okay. It is a last type of resort for us. If we cannot control this infection by any other way, then only go for hysterectomy. Now, see there. Okay. So, all of you, uh, please uh, focus on this slide. This is like a very important take home message for you. Conjunctive coagulopathy. A DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, is an uncommon but a serious complication of septic abortion. There's no doubt about it. Not only septic abortion, any serious infection in our body, if it has caused septicemia, DIC can occur. Number one point. And if product of conception or POC are not removed in a septic abortion, severe sepsis often occurs. I have already compared this like a case of abscess. Until and unless we remove that infected material outside, patient is never going to improve. Now, let's move further. The another important uh, types of abortion is recurrent abortion. Recurrent means multiple times. So, according to the definition, okay, according to the definition, it is more or equal to two successive clinically recognized pregnancy losses of less than 20 weeks gestation. So if a lady has you know, uh, more than two abortion, we call it recurrent abortion. According to definition, it has to be less than 20 weeks. Now, a lady or a woman with two successive spontaneous abortion have a recurrence risk of almost 25 to 30%. So this is the important data. So see here, with two successive spontaneous abortion, have a recurrence risk of 25 to 30%. So it may happen again, that's the meaning. Regarding the etiology, the most important one is again, chromosomal abnormality. Chromosomal abnormality in that fetus which is developing or in that embryo which is developing can result in recurrent abortion. Anatomical abnormality like uterine didelphi, septate uterus, bicornoid uterus, and unicornoid uterus, all these may be associated with recurrent abortion. Now, earlier also we talked about this term, but let me explain this with the help of pictures now. So all of you, please uh, focus here. Let me use the pointer. And explain. Now, the first one is called uterus didelphi. Now, uterus didelphi means there are two uterine cavity and there are two vagina. See there, everything is uh, two here. The whole uterine uh, cavity is divided into two parts, different. There is a big septa, you know, there are two uterine cavity altogether and there are two vagina. Uterus didelphi. Unicornote, see there, okay, one horn. Okay, corno means horn looking, you know, one cavity, very small cavity actually with a single vagina. This is called arcuate uterus because of the shape. Septet, okay, see here, okay, there's a formation of septi right there. This is a complete type of septation, okay, see there. The whole uterine cavity is divided into two parts, but there's a single vagina, 
you may be wondering what is the difference between septate uterus and didelphy uterus in didelphy uterine cavity is two vagina are also two in septate uterus only the uterine cavities are two vagina is single very easy difference bicornuot uterus see that these are the two horn okay and bicornuot complete a little bit deeper so these are some of the important congenital anomaly which are already there regarding the uterus or vagina now one small question why do they usually result in recurrent abortion the answer is very very simple because there is no enough space inside the uterine cavity the product of conception cannot grow there okay as a result of that it will abort now apart from anatomical abnormalities okay what are the other causes she here there may be some acquired defect like intrauterine sinecke which is known as asserman syndrome the sinecke means okay, they are fused with each other the two uterine wall okay the wall of the uterus on either side will fuse okay uh, this is uh, just like a uh, i can compare this with a prior surgery inside the abdomen if the surgeon has given incision and did previous surgery and now if the patient has got some other problem and if you open the abdomen again okay what will happen there is development of adhesion there is development of adhesion the similar type of adhesion if it has formed inside the uterus is called sinecke another is leiomyoma no need of any discussion this is a benign tumor of a smooth muscle of the uterus if these leiomyomas are big they can again cause recurrent abortion because there is no not proper space inside the uterine cavity now another very very important condition which can lead to recurrent abortion is cervical incompetence now see there the meaning is there is painless cervical dilation which leads to repeated second trimester abortion the cervix is dilated on its own and it is a pain painless situation there is no pain so the lady without any pain you know develops abortion cervical incompetence has to be thought and this condition is treated with cervical cerclage now cervical cerclage means you suture that cervix okay you apply purse string like suture around the cervix so that it will be tighter it cannot dilate on its own this is cervical cerclage this is a type of surgery so all of these are different etiologies of recurrent abortion okay some more these are more common okay these are a bit less common than the uh, which we just mentioned now endocrinologic abnormalities may be there okay so the endocrine problem one of the endocrine problem we have already listed if you remember is a decreased progesterone hormone another may be excessive androgen infection like chlamydia urea plasma listeria toxoplasma or even syphilis these are also listed these are the same causes which leads to abortion we talked in the beginning autoimmune conditions like anti phospholipid syndrome okay anti phospholipid syndrome means there is recurrent thrombus formation which can result in fetal death fetal demise means fetal death I mean majority of the cases it is undiagnosed or unexplained or idiopathic and sometimes even genetic mutation in the mother which results in thrombi formation and that thrombus can lead to decreased blood flow towards the placenta may be a cause of recurrent abortion this is called maternal thrombophilia so these are uh, some of the uncommon causes but nevertheless these may cause recurrent abortion if it is already there now how we manage it okay now see here you need to know uh, the causes first then only we can talk about the management so investigate the possible etiology first and these are the useful test so you can you can mention them under investigation 
or management management investigation is a part of management that's why it is highlighted here do the karyotype of the abortus to know what is the chromosomal abnormality of that abortus there do the parental karyotyping as well we want to know what is the karyotyping of the parents if they are trisomy already there if they they are having mosaicism for example different chromosomal lines are there there is a high chance that uh, they will give birth to a baby uh, who is also abnormal and if that baby cannot be normally born then it may terminate as abortion some other uh, uh, useful test are sono hysterogram okay hysteroscopy now sono hysterogram these are the different uh, terms where we can uh, you know uh, push some dye inside the uterus okay and then uh, uh, with the help of radiological test we can find out what's wrong inside the uterus hysteroscopy is like endoscopic examination of the uterus okay under direct vision luteal phase endometrial biopsy it can be taken but not very helpful and this is done to know whether there is decreased progesterone hormone or not once endometrial biopsy doesn't show any secretory change that means the progesterone hormone is lacking another test is anti cardiolipin and anti phosphatidyl serin antibody these are present in anti phospholipid syndrome and i already told you recurrent thrombosis are very common in this disorder which can cause in a cause recurrent abortion lupus anticoagulant is also part of anti phospholipid workup or it may be seen in sle as well and factor 5 leaden it is also important part in recurrent thrombosis problem okay this is abnormal type of factor 5 so these all are a different uh, you know management i mean investigation uh, you can order in a case of recurrent abortion okay now this is the last slide for for this class another is a um, induced abortion which i am going to talk in the next discussion okay so at the end all of you please focus on this uh, slide or on your screen this is a summarized version of whatever we have talked till now now see this threatened abortion okay so let me highlight before we stop this class threatened abortion inevitable abortion incomplete abortion complete abortion missed abortion and septic abortion recurrent abortion is not included here and these are the some very important history okay these are the historical points so please revise them these are the tissues which may be coming out or may be retained inside the uterine cavity the opening or closing of the cervical os is very very important point in our next class probably we can ask some question from here okay what about the viability of pregnancy very important point and finally the management so revise this on your own okay so let me stop here for